Hello, everyone. Uh, we are very glad to be on the stage of Black Hat Asia again to share something about smart home security holes. Uh, my name is Yan Jia, a research associate at Nankai University, China. Uh, hi, guys. I'm Bing Yuan from Huazhong University of Science and Technology, uh, China. Today, uh, Yan and I will uh, both to uh, present our work uh, on the smart home security uh, with you guys, and I'm really glad to be here. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Uh, I will first introduce the first part of the talk, and uh, then we will continue the second part. Uh, this talk is based on a joint work from five universities. The academic paper on security risk of disjointed IoT device management channels uh, was published at ACM CCS. Uh, November 2021. Uh, you can find more details by reaching out our paper. First, uh, let's take a look at how a user operates smart home devices in general. After we set up a smart device, for example, a smart lock on the door, uh, we can remotely control the door to open or close by the companion app. It is very convenient for us to control our home appliances from the phone. And we can manage people who can access the device. However, uh, with the number of IoT devices increase, the number of IoT apps may also increase. Uh, for example, a house owner can use the physical Hue app to turn on, turn off her light bulbs, the iSmart Gate app to open her garbage door. August app to lock her front door. Uh, too many apps may annoy users. Imagine that you need to switch from apps to apps for controlling and checking different appliances all day. Thus, uh, we would like one ring to them all. Uh, actually, the increasing diversity and the fragment chaining of IoT devices give rise to third party solutions we can manage different devices uh, regardless of their manufacturers. For example, Apple's HomeKit, Zigbee, and the Zwave compatible frameworks and the smart speakers. Users can use one app to use them all. Uh, one most popular kind of solution is the cloud-based smart speaker. Uh, the user command different device vendor clouds delegate the right to smart speaker cloud and the user uh, can control all devices through the speaker's cloud as showed in the picture on right. The cross vendor delegation together with the user sharing uh, generate a complicated delegation chain, which brings challenges for the access control enforcement. Uh, this risk hidden in the complex delegation chain uh, were discussed in our talk last year at Black Hat Asia. This time we focus on something different. Uh, there are many third party solutions and the different users may have different preferences. Uh, a question for the vendors here is that how to let both the group of people favor and buy their products? Uh, for users, the most convenience and capability, uh, manufacturers tend to integrate multiple frameworks in addition to its own framework. And the people who favor different apps can use the device. In our, in our research, we call uh, such a framework, including uh, all its device and uh, cloud side components, a uh, device management channel. Uh, on an IoT device, uh, the user console, the IoT cloud hub, and uh, the on device software stack uh, together from the device management channel uh, to allow the user to mount. Uh, the garage door opener has two disjointed DMC the manufacturers and the Apple's home kit. From the picture, we can see that they share the same hardware boot up and the Wi-Fi provision, but there are no any control between them. The owner uses the home kit only. And an attacker can hardly control the device without the owner's permission through home kit uh, because of Apple home kit's DMC's user management. However, uh, the manufacturer's DMC is dangling and in the waiting for binding state, an attacker can still see the bind the 
manufactures DMC and controls the device. Similarly, uh, Philip Hill devices support multiple DMC. The manufacturers Bluetooth DMC and uh, Zigbee DMC. These two DMCs uh, are based on different uh, communication techniques and uh, work independently. So uh, if the owner occupies the manufacturer's Bluetooth one, an attacker can take the other. If the owner chooses uh, the B channel, an attacker can take over the Bluetooth one. Now I will show you the, the video. The victim I can control the bow. And the, the attacker's phone is showed in the right corner. The attacker can use the Bluetooth channel uh, to control the bubble without any permission. Okay, uh, in the two cases mentioned, uh, the DMC management is fully disjointed and uh, the attacker uh, can easily control the device through the dangling DMC. Uh, further, uh, we found even though some manufacturers try to control other third party DMC, uh, the device can still suffer illegal access. Uh, this figure uh, shows the August smart lock try to control the home kit by utilizing AD. Uh, AD is an uh, addition. There. Uh, Apple HomeKit provides this mechanism for, for vendors to set a secret, and the HomeKit will check this secret when receiving operation commands. If there is uh, no AAD, an attacker may take the dangling HomeKit channel uh, to read and uh, write the status of the lock. Uh, however, uh, because of the uh, AAD with the guard of AAD, the attacker cannot uh, open the lock without the owner's permission uh, because uh, the lock will check the command uh, whether carry on a, a correct AAD. Uh, so the attacker can uh, only read the lock's status. Uh, there may be some privacy concerns because the writer, uh, because the attacker can read the uh, lock's status remotely by, uh, by, by Bluetooth. Uh, but the attacker cannot break in the victim's house, right? So the, uh, so the key point here is uh, how to get an AED. Uh, we know that uh, the August app will pass the AED to HomeKit app, but uh, how can the attacker uh, get the AED of the target lock? Here, uh, we consider a device sharing scenario. Uh, in some scenario, a user may temporarily share the device with other untrusted people, uh, for example, an Airbnb guest uh, or a babysitter. Uh, in this device sharing scenario, a malicious user can abuse uh, this temporary permission uh, to quietly enable the Apple HomeKit DMC and uh, bypass AD to his iOS August app. Uh, also, uh, the owner revokes the attacker's access right later, the attacker can still uh, operate the lock through the home kit channel. Yeah, so the owner just revoke the uh, attacker's permission on the August app, but he cannot uh, remove him from the home kit channel, uh, which means uh, a malicious user could still open the door after he checks out. If the owner uh, is using an Android phone, uh, he even cannot see any panel of the HomeKit in his Android phone because the HomeKit is developed by, by the, the Apple and uh, only supported in iOS, uh, iOS smartphone. Uh, so this means the owner, if the owner is an Android owner, uh, the owner can hardly find the HomeKit is took over by another person. Okay, next, uh, Bing will show something more interesting finding in our study. 
Okay, uh, thank you and hello again to all. And um, again, I'm Bing from uh, Hwaju University of Science and Technology. And now I will take over to uh, show more details of our work. Uh, yeah, so let's continue with the uh, understanding the problem, which we call the, the Kodama problem. So recall that uh, Ian just mentioned that there are uh, four states uh, in, the, in a single GMC uh, state machine model, which is the factory uh, state then uh, with the boot up, it, the device will uh, turn into the waiting for network uh, state. Uh, and, and after the network provision, the, uh, the, the, the device will uh, waiting for the user's commands for binding. And after the bind, the, 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 bind, the binding operation, then the device will uh, transfer into the running state where, where uh, it takes the operations and uh, executes the command. So uh, Ian just mentioned the three flows. Actually, the flow one and the flow two uh, happens at, during the factory state. Uh, that is the uh, exploited DMC at this stage and the attacker manages to uh, gain an authorized control from this state. And for the, for the flow four, uh, this actually uh, happens during the uh, runtime, time, which, uh, uh, which leads to the um, um, authorized access to the uh, smart home, uh, to, the, to the home kit enabled August smart lock. So naturally, uh, one might think, what about the two other states? Are these two states also vulnerable? And how we can exploit, explore such vulnerabilities for attacks? Um, so we take a, a so we, so we take a deep look into this, and unfortunately, we, we found that uh, this, uh, there are other flaws that are, are also possible uh, to, uh, for the attacker to, to gain um, authorized uh, access to the device. So let's, uh, take, uh, let's first uh, take a look at the abort system. Uh, the, the, the abort system is actually a security alarm system for the smart home and uh, it supports both the uh, manufacturer DMC and the home kit DMC. Uh, actually, uh, a board tries to secure their system by hiding the setup code of the home kit DMC. That means uh, to set up the, to enable the home kit DMC, uh, a user actually have to gain access, uh, gain permission from the manufacturer DMC first. And then uh, from the manufacturer DMC, he, uh, he can obtain a setup code and then use this setup code to enable the home kit DMC. Uh, uh, this enhanced security uh, seems, uh, uh, seems uh, would work fine in, in a blind scenario. But again, if we uh, consider the, the scenario where a temporary uh, uh, guest is, uh, uh, is, is visiting the home, as, as Ian just mentioned, uh, so a malicious uh, guest um, can uh, can use the can uh, can can explore this vulnerability uh, to attack the the, the abort system. Uh, to be uh, to be specific, uh, <coughs> specifically, uh, if if the malicious user uh, is temporarily authorized to to uh, access the manufacturer DMC, so he he could. Uh, uh, he could steal the setup code uh, when, when he is authorized and then use this setup code to enable the home kit DMC without the permission from the owner. And uh, he can maintain such, uh, uh, such uh, control even after his, his permission is revoked from the uh, manufacturer's DMC. So that's the, uh, that's the flow that we found uh, happens during the uh, which, uh, which for binding uh, state. And also, we found the uh, the width, the width for uh, network provision state is also vulnerable. Uh, specifically, uh, the the uh, Philips Hue uh, manufacturer channel tries to control the network provision of of the of the the, the smart speakers DMC. Uh, in specific, if the device is paired with the uh, the manufacturer DMC, which is the lower one. Uh, the the hue the the field hue scheme say first the uh, uh, the the, atta the attacker will not be able to use the 
the, the smart speed DMC to control the, uh, the, the device. This is because um, after, the, after the device is paired uh, for, uh, with the, from, the, from the manufacturer DMC, uh, the owner has to click a button in the, in the eye, which is the make discoverable eye, uh, button to, uh, to enable the, the device to accept a new, new uh, pair request from other uh, DMCs, uh, such as the, um, such as the, BR, the BRE uh, DMC from, the, from a smart speaker. However, uh, such protection does not work if the owner opts to use the smart home, uh, the smart speaker DMC first, uh, uh, and uh, uh, which leaves the the manufacturer DMC unused. Then again, the, the attacker can use this uh, dangling uh, manufacturer DMC to gain um, to gain um, um, authorized uh, uh, control to the device. Uh, so that's all the flaws we uh, we have found. And if we take a close look at the, the attacks, actually uh, each attack relies on some conditions, uh, which we summarize as the following three uh, conditions. Uh, first, uh, the first is that the device owner opts, to, uh, opts for some, but not all DMC to manage a device. Uh, for example, the, the flow four requires this condition to be true uh, for, the, for the attacker to uh, successfully uh, game um, also risk, uh, access control. Also, the second condition is that the adversary can access the target device Wi-Fi network. Uh, this, this condition is, is required for um, flow one, flow three, and flow four uh, because they need to get into the uh, into the home network of the victim to uh, uh, to connect to the devices. And the the, the last condition is that. Uh, the, uh, the owner grants the adversary a temporary access to the targeted device, uh, which is required in the uh, flow three and flow four we just mentioned. So, uh, so that is the, the, the problem. The code, the code vulnerabilities are actually highly related to the, to the human behaviors, such as which DMCs does the owner uses and does the owner willing to uh, share their their Wi-Fi network to uh, to other users. So we did a user study to understand the feasibility of the the attacks we found. Uh, uh, specifically, we set up a user study uh, uh, and ask the uh, participants to set up a device that supports uh, that supports multiple DMCs. And after that, we asked them to uh, fill a follow up questionnaire. Uh, and about how, uh, how they would prefer to use their uh, smart home devices. So um, the, the result actually shows that all the conditions we, uh, we just mentioned can be met in, in the real world smart, uh, in the real world, uh, uh, smart home scenarios. Uh, actually, uh, over 83% particip uh, uh, participants only set, set up one DMC which means uh, there are uh, unused DMCs uh, 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 in the device, which leaves uh, a door for the attackers to, to uh, leverage such dangling DMCs for attack. And uh, also for the condition two, the home Wi-Fi network is usually shared, but the password is really changed, which also makes it possible to, uh, uh, for the condition two uh, to, be, uh, to be true in the, in the, in the real world. And at last, uh, the IoT users are actually, waiting, uh, are, are actually waiting to share smart home devices, such as um, IRBMB guest, uh, um, IRBMB host would share the, uh, their devices to the IRBMB guest. So which indicates that the condition three can also be true in the, in the real world scenario. Uh, so uh, with these conditions, uh, all can be met, which, which makes the, our, uh, the the flaws we identified can be uh, uh, can be real, can be realistic in the real world. Then we uh, we take it from the, from the Windows perspective because we want to know uh, whether the the Windows or the manufacturer have provided in enough information to inform their users to avoid such problem. Again, unfortunately, we found that almost. Almost all of the when the windows fail to inform the users of this uh, of this uh, uh, new risks, 
I think this is uh, this is probably the the windows uh, by now they, they actually um, didn't realize such uh, risks uh, also so they cannot provide the 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 guidance the security guidance to the to their users to secure to secure uh, their their devices so with the attacks and with the uh, with the uh, with the serious consequences, we want to fix this the, uh, this problem. So an idea um, um, an ideal solution would be a user can use any DMC to control all the other DMCs. However, uh, such uh, to achieve uh, to achieve that requires all the all the parties such as the vendors, uh, the manufacturers, the IoT uh, service providers, all of them to work together to uh, produce a uh, a standardized, uh, a, a standardized cross-channel management protocol. However, we think given the current stage of the IoT ecosystem, it would take a very long time. However, the, the users who are exposed to the uh, codemer risks, they, they cannot wait. So uh, before an idea and a long-term solution can be uh, fully developed and uh, deployed, we propose the uh, C-Guard, which is short for channel guard. Uh, and the C guard is a uh, practical and uh, lightweight and uh, effective mitigation. It can be uh, easily adopted by the device manufacturers to mitigate the, the, uh, the codemer attacks we just proposed. And it actually requires no change to the uh, third party DMCs. Uh, specifically, we, we implemented a C guard in the application logic layer. Uh, on the on the device, and uh, it would uh, use the labor the DMC libraries, which are already uh, in the device, uh, and uh, to to enable or disable uh, uh, the the DMCs at the owner's wish. So specifically, when designing the C guard, we have two goals. First is the control uh, goal, which means the users can fully control her device, uh, including uh, enable or disable all all of the DMCs. And then for the usability, we want to uh, make sure the users can choose any DMC first to use when when the when he got the when, when he bought a new device, which means the user can choose any device uh, any DMC to use at the factory stage. Um, so um, uh, specifically, the DMCs are actually uh, opened at factory stage under the C guard. And then, uh, if the if the owner uh, chooses to use the manufactured DMC first, uh, she can send the commands from her app to uh, to disable the other third party uh, DMCs, which uh, which means it would block the the attacks from leveraging such uh, dangling DMCs for attack. And uh, of course, the the owner can always issue an enable co command to uh, reopen to re-enable uh, a, a third-party DMC and uh, for, uh, so that um, authorized user can, can use this DMC to control the, 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 the device, which, which maintains the, the device sharing functionality of the, smart, of the smart home devices. And uh, also if the, um, if, the, if the owner chooses to use the, a third-party DMC first, for example, uh, the, the user might choose to use the Apple HomeKit uh, manufacture uh, the Apple HomeKit DMC first to control the device. Then the the C guard will automatically uh, disable all the other um, all, all the other DMCs, including the manufacturer DMC, so that the uh, the, the attacks cannot leverage uh, the the dangling DMCs to uh, to attack the device. So. Uh, uh, so that's the the flaws we, we found and the 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 the, the, the timely protection we, we proposed. Uh, and in summary, we we actually discovered a new type of, of vulnerability in the in the IoT ecosystem, and it involves mainly uh, vendors, including Apple HomeKit, August, Philips Hue, uh, uh, etc. And uh, uh, we demonstrated that the, the attack is uh, real, realistic with POC attacks and with the uh, the, the user studies, and the, and the consequence can, can actually be, be serious because the, uh, for example, the August not uh, the, the one of the vulnerable 
uh, a device is the August lock, which means an attacker can, can use this to unlock the victim's door. And uh, uh, to, uh, to mitigate such problem, we, we propose a, uh, a, a, a timely and uh, uh, naturated uh, solution, um, which is the safeguard. And it can be uh, deployed by the manufacturers alone and without uh, requiring to change the DMC, uh, without uh, uh, changing the third party DMCs. So it can be provide a timely uh, protection to the users. So uh, that be all. Thank you very much, and uh, we are uh, happy to take questions. Thank you. Thanks for your question.